This program is made possible by the members of the Church Street Baptist Church in Greensboro, North Carolina. Thank you so much for joining us today on Unspeakable Joy. It's my honor to come to you on this most wonderful day, the most powerful, most awesome day in all of human history, the day that we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been to Jerusalem before. I've seen the grave. And I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, it is empty and Jesus is alive. We want to thank you so much for letting us come into your home, but especially on this day. We want to take just a moment and invite you. You still have time. We have one service today at 1030. This morning we'll be presenting a dramatized message entitled, By His Stripes. Our entire sanctuary will look like Golgotha and Calvary in that time period when Jesus was crucified. Get your family ready. Get your kids ready. You still have time to get here. Come join us this morning for our resurrection celebration by His stripes. But once again, before we go into the message for our time today, I want to thank you. Thank you for letting us come into your home. Thank you for letting us be a part of your family. Thank you for letting me tell you about the most wonderful person that ever lived, that ever breathed, that ever died, but the only one that ever rose again, and his name is Jesus. May God be with you, and may God bless you, is our prayer. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed I want to talk to you for just a second on what God has given me out of the book of Joshua chapter 1. Joshua 1 verse number 8. If you need a Bible, you can look on the screen. I want you to look and see what the scripture says. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then... Thou shalt have good success. That phrase there at the end, good success, is what my mind is drawn to this morning. I want to talk to you for just a second on how to have good success. Now before you think that you've walked into a name it and claim it generation or church, you've got to understand what God means when He says good success. We live in a day where they tell you good success is everything but what good success really is. They'll tell you good success is, is, a, is a better car. That's not good success. That's more trouble. They tell you that good success is a bigger house. That's not good success. That's more cleaning. They tell me that good success is having more money. That's not good success. That's more headache. They tell me that good success is having a better wife. That's God knows I don't need to go any further on that thing. They tell me that good success is, is having a, good, a better husband. I'll keep moving if you know what I'm talking about. Here's what I'm saying. Whenever the world tells you something is, you can almost guarantee it ain't. And when the world tells you something ain't, you can almost guarantee it that it really is. Whenever God uses the term good success, it's the Hebrew word sakal, and it means to have an understanding to know where to walk. When God tells you how to have good success, what He's wanting you to know, what He's wanting you to have, is to have the wisdom to know what direction to walk in. That's why he talks in this verse about journey. That's why he talks in this verse about way. That's why he talks about what you say. Preacher, what do you, what do you mean? Well, just think about it. Whenever God gives Joshua this word, what's going on in Joshua's life? Joshua has a river he needs to cross, and he has no idea how. Joshua has a land that he needs to conquer, and he has no idea how. 
Joshua has a people to lead, and he has no idea how. Joshua has something he needs to do, but he has no, no idea how to get it done. Joshua, he says, God, I don't know what to do. And this is what God gives to him. He says, Joshua, I'm going to give to you the understanding and the wisdom to know how to do what you don't know how to do. And he says, Joshua, when you do it, I'm calling that good success. God said, son, daughter, I want to tell you what good success really is. Good success is not higher, bigger, grander, greater. Big, good success is not, is not deeper, higher, richer, whatever. It is knowing what to do when you need to know what to do. It's knowing where to walk when you need to know where to walk. It's knowing how to get where you want to get knowing you need to get there. God calls that good success. And the secret to that good success is having a book of the law. Now, here's what I'm thinking this morning. I've got three points. I am going to load them in the gospel shotgun and blow them out. So let me give you three little things about this book of the law. But you've got to understand where this success is found. The Bible says in that the end of the, the beginning of that verse, he said, you'll find good success in this book of the law. In this book of the law, the Bible, the Word of God, the law, the Torah, this is where God said your success, Joshua, will be found. Woodrow Wilson made this statement. He said, whenever you read the Bible, you have found in it the very key to life, the very key to success, and the very key to your duty. Victor Hugo was a man that lived in England in yesteryear, and this is what Victor Hugo said. He said that England has two books. One of those books was made by England, and one of those books made England. You say, what were they? He said they were Shakespeare and the Bible. I tell you today that America has two books that have made it, and it made America. The Constitution and the Bible, the Holy Word of God. One was made by the nation, and one made the nation. Is it any wonder this morning that those two documents are the very two documents that are under attack? Now, if you're not a fan of America or this wonderful land, you're going to get more uncomfortable than you are comfortable by the time this things over because today there is a move and there is a push to tear down the Constitution of the United States that say all men were created by God and endowed with certain unalienable rights and they're tearing that down. You know why they're able to tear down the Constitution? Because back in 1900 in the 60s they already tore down the word of the living God. You cannot take the book of God out of the people's mind out of the people's life and have blessing. Remember what I said good success was. Good success is having Having the ability to know what to do when you need to do it. Is it any wonder why our politicians, our people, our leaders, they run around like termites and yo-yos just spinning. It doesn't matter if the Republicans are in charge, the Democrats are in charge. They all do what they say they're not going to do and none of them do what they actually say they're going to do. Why? I'll tell you why. Because they do not know the way that they ought to walk. You cannot get what you need to get. You cannot go where you need to go by looking at Shakespeare. You cannot get it by reading philosophy. Ladies and gentlemen, God has programmed every human being with a key that is able to be turned only when you put the Holy Bible inside of that slot and turn that key over. That's why in your marriage, if you don't have the Word of God in your marriage, then God says you will not know the way that you ought to walk. Nationally, those two documents are under attack, but I'm telling you in our families and in our home and in our churches, that very Bible is under attack. God convicted me so bad this week about the lack of a family altar in my house, about the lack of our family reading the Bible together. Oh, we watch ball games together. We watch TV together. We talk about this. We go to gymnastics together. We go to bus, 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 soccer together. We do it all, and there's nothing wrong with that. But how can our families know which way to go if we do not have the Holy Word of God as the very pathway upon which we are to go? Ladies and gentlemen, that's why our marriages fall apart. That's why our nation falls apart. That's why our lives fall apart. That's why we don't know what to do. We make foolish decisions. We make crazy decisions. Have you ever wondered how smart it is to have a truck payment or a car payment or a this payment? And man, it's, it's $955 or whatever your car payment is anymore. And they told me the other day that Ford put out a brand new truck that was a hundred thousand dollars. It ought to massage every part of my body and drive for me for a hundred thousand dollars. But man, you know what we do? What do we do? 
We, we say, you know what, I got the truck payment and I almost got it paid off. What do we do though? We go to the car lot and say, you know what, it's only a few dollars more. Yeah, for 18 more years. And we laugh about it. But it's things like that we do every single day of our lives. I know I should do this, but. I know I should go there, but we don't have a clue how to live life the way God wants us to live it. And we wonder why our nation is in turmoil. We wonder why we don't have good success. Oh, we've got bigger cars, but none of us have good success. We've got bigger houses than we've ever had, but none of us have good success. We've even got better health than we've ever had, but none of us feel like we have good success. Do you wonder why it is? I'll tell you why it is. Because we're trying to open up a door and not use the right key. So what do we do? We get out our spiritual lock picks and say, you know what, if I can't get it to turn and if God won't turn it for me, I'll pick the lock and do it myself. And we end up doing damage and we end up breaking down doors and we end up going places we ought not go. Why? Because we have no idea how to have true, good, right, and godly success in the day that we're living in three things, load them in, give them to you. I can tell y'all are eating this up like your grandmama's cranberry sauce at Thanksgiving. Number one, let me tell to you about the foundation of good success. Look back at verse number eight. The Bible says this, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. The foundation of success is at the beginning of verse eight. This book of the law. Law. This book, this law, this word that I've given to you, it is a complete foundation. He said, Joshua, everything you need to know. Joshua, everything, every path you need to cross, the answer is found in this book of the law. Everywhere you need to journey, every decision you need to make, it is found in this book of the law. It's all in one place. Joshua, when you get into the land, you don't need to talk to the Amorites. You don't need to talk to the Hittites. You don't need to go to the Jebusite Vogues. You don't need to do any of that, Joshua. Why? Because this book of the law has everything you need. You don't need to see what the Jerusalem Dr. Phil is talking about. You don't need to know what Oprah and all her people are talking about. Why? Because you've got this book of the law. Joshua, you don't have to turn to the left hand. You don't have to go to the right hand. Joshua, why? Because the foundation that you need to stand on is a complete and total and package put in one place. I'm telling you, child of God, we've got more books on families, but our families are in bad shape. We've got more books on self-help, but we've got less help than we've ever had. We've got more books on how to live healthy, but we are dying with heart disease like the cat is coming out of the bag. Why? Because whenever you've got everything, but you don't have the one thing that you need, you can have everything you want. But if you don't have that one, you say, preacher, are you that old-fashioned? I'm so old-fashioned to believe. No, grandma and grandpa, mama, daddy, great-grandma, great-grandpa, they didn't have what I have. They didn't have iPhones. They didn't have this. They didn't have that. They didn't go there. They didn't do that. They didn't have a car. They didn't have air conditioner. They didn't have a refrigerator. They didn't have a freezer. But you know what they had? They had a solid foundation that their lives were built on. That's why they didn't fall apart. That's why they didn't divorce one another. That's why they didn't beat one another. That's why they didn't tear the kids down. That's why they taught the kids something. I feel like preaching this morning. I'm telling you, we've got everything that we don't need. And the one thing we do need is the word of the living God. We'll watch an hour of Phil. We'll watch an an hour of Oprah. We'll even come to the church house and let old TG tell us what we ought to do. But we will not take one second and open up that holy book and say, God, give me a word for my family. Give me a word for my kids. Give me a word for me. You say, preacher, I don't know where to turn. I I deal with more people in counseling. They come to me, Bob, and they say, preacher, I just don't know what to do. I just don't know where to turn. I just don't know how to act. I just don't know what to do and where to go and how to turn. I'm not trying to simplify it, and I'm not trying to put your problem down on the floor, but at the end of the day, you may have a high problem, but the key is the same for a high problem and a low problem. It is found in 66 books of the Word of the living God. It's found in 39 old or in 27 new. It's found in God's Word. It's found in the Holy Word. It's found in the pure Word. It's found in the lovely Word. It's found in the wonderful Word. It's found in the gracious Word. It's found in God's Word. Anything you need, everything you need, it is found in the black back pages of the Holy Word of the living God. You say, I don't believe it. Do it your way. I don't care. Let it keep falling apart. We take it out of school. Wonder why the kids are killing each other in school. 
Take it out of the hole. Wonder why mamas and daddies are cheating on each other like it's going out of style. Take it out of your kid's mind. That's fine. Pump them full of that mess. Let's just keep doing it the way we're doing it. And my grandchildren will not live in a United States of America. They'll live in a broke down, run down, perverted land where there is no hope and there is no freedom and there is no goodness and there is no solidarity. Why? Because you can go and listen to the Amorites. You can listen to the Jebusites. But the moment you descend down and say, I'm done with the book, you tear apart the foundation and don't know why it's all falling apart it's a a complete look at what it says it's a concrete foundation this book of the what? law now listen to me I don't know about you I don't know about what you're thinking but I believe we live in the only nation where laws are not laws they're guidelines so here's what I'm saying like it lump it I don't Do not take your understanding of how our nation's laws work into your theology of how God's laws work. You don't go to God and I don't go to God and say, God, I heard what you said, but... God said, you can butt all day long, son, and just keep on skipping down the road. Can I tell you something? God is a narrow-minded God. There's one way of salvation. There's one way to run your family. There's one way to raise your kids. There's one way to live your life, and it's God's way. It's God's way of salvation. It's God's way of marriage. It's God's way of raising your kids. It's God's way of church. You can go to, I don't care if your church is known by one name or 500 names. I don't care if they got purple lights, green lights, white lights, blue lights, purple lights, television cameras, regular cameras, no cameras. I don't care if it's a wooden pulpit, a glass pulpit, a piano, a guitar. I don't care if it's drums. I don't care if there's wallpaper or decorations on the back. If you go to a church or if I go to a church, it's God's way. Of doing church is not Tyler's way of doing church, it's not your way of doing church, it's not Tyler's way of living out my marriage, it's not Tyler's way of raising his kids, it's God's way. There's only one way. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. You say, Preacher, I want to go to heaven. I've come to give you good news. There is a way, but there's only one way. It's not a Baptist way, a Methodist way, an Episcopalian way, a Lutheran way, uh, any way. It's Jesus' way, and it's by the foot of the old rugged cross, through the blood, through the blood, through the blood through the blood of Jesus Christ he's a narrow-minded God but I wrote this down you want to write this down it's one of those tweetable ones he's a narrow-minded God with open arms he may be narrow-minded but he's open-armed what does that mean preacher it means anybody that wants good success he doesn't look at white people and say you're the only ones that can have it He doesn't look at black people and say, you're the only ones that can have it. He doesn't look at men and say, you're the only ones that can have it. He doesn't look at women and say, you're the only ones that have it. Can I tell you something? Any group or nation that tries to divide everybody, women, men, black, white, Jesus said, red or saved, right or wrong, good or bad. There's one way. It's Jesus' way. And you know what he says? He says, black man, come on. White man, come on. White woman, come on. Black woman, come on. Anybody that will, you can have it, but you're going to do it my way. You say that makes me uncomfortable. I don't care what it makes you. Truth is truth. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. And we've got to get off of this hobby horse of fearing what everybody thinks. It's only God's way or it's man's way. It's the right way. It's the wrong way. It is one way. The reason we don't have good success is we're trying to do it every other way but the right way. It's a concrete. You can't. But you know what else I found? I'm not a builder. Dwayne, you know that. But you know what I found? You can build a boathouse, a mansion. You can build a shack. You can build a shanty. It doesn't matter what you try to build as long as it's built on concrete. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Here's what I'm talking about. You don't have to be a preacher. I don't have to be you. You don't have to be me. Your life's not going to look like my life. My life's not going to look like your life. We're not cookie cutters. You're not going to dress like I dress. You're not going to say what I say. God in heaven, I hope you don't say what I say. You're not going to act like I act. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you're trying to just be a regular husband or a regular wife. You just want to live a normal life. Or if you're trying to walk and change the entire world, you can do whatever God's told you and called you to do. But as long as you build it on the right foundation, it'll work.
I promise it'll work. It's a concrete foundation. But watch what it says. It's a constant foundation. It says, it shall not depart out of thy mouth. That word depart, it means to wane weak. It has the idea of breath. Listen, right now, if I go, ah, that breath comes out strong, but eventually it flutters away. God said, my law is not like that. It's like a line drive. It's as strong at the end of it as it is when it came off the bat. It's like a golf ball. It's got as much power at the beginning as it does at the end. God's Word, it doesn't matter if it was written 2,000 years ago. It doesn't matter if it was written when Moses got done writing the law. God told Joshua, he said, Joshua, it's as strong today as it was for Moses. Why? Because it is a foundation. And if you're going to have good success, you've got to have this foundation. You say, preacher, I want to be this. Get that foundation. You say, I want to do that. Get your foundation. You put that foundation in you and it will grow but you got to build it on the right foundation number two the foundation of it number two the formula of it all right preacher you've yelled you've stomped you screamed you sweat on how good the bible is now what do i do with it what's the formula of good success how many can i can i be dr phil for a minute how many of you have situations or things burnt whatever and you'd be honest and say, I really don't know how to get it done. That's what I thought. What do you do then? He gives the formula in, in the middle of verse number 8. He says, watch this. Joshua, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. There's a two-way formula right here to have good success in whatever God's called you to do. You ready? Number one, consume the word and number two do the word look at what he says he says meditate say that word with me meditate say it with me meditate now I, I lost four or five hundred people right there I'm not sitting in a room cross leg humming that's what we think of meditation isn't it you with me Carrie's with me that's what we think I'm going to sit back in my lazy boy and go, hmm, hmm, that's what we think of meditation. But that word there, thou shalt meditate, that word meditate is the Hebrew word, haga, and it means to chew the cud. Have you ever seen a cow? That's the nastiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Man, they, they, they get that grass, they rip that grass off, and they just get that, they get after it. The, the closest thing to watching a cow chew is watching a four-year-old chew. <laughs> Ella, if you don't shut your mouth, I'm going to throw up at this table. And then, you, and then you, she always got an older brother. Ella, stop doing that. <laughs> but you know that cow, it just chews, and it chews, and it swallows. And that word haga, it means to regurgitate. You know that cow will regurgitate, and it chews it again, and it chews it again, and it chews it again. What does it mean to meditate on the word? When you read that word, you're riding down the road. You don't meditate sitting in kumbaya with your fingers out like that. The word meditate in the Bible, it means to constantly think about it. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord. The God. The glorious one. Hmm. The king. Hmm. I'll take a cheese. Hmm. The Lord. Hmm. Hmm. A fries. The Lord, mm, the Lord, He is. Oh, not He, not was, not gonna be. He right now. It, mm, meditate, thinking about it, chewing that cud. Why does a cow chew the cud to get every ounce of nutrients out of that grass? Do you know why you meditate on the word? Because there's so many juicy parts of that word. God wants you to get every single nutrient. That's why. You know why the devil fights meditation so much? That's why we can't get in the car without cranking the radio up. Because the devil knows if he can get your mind on um bopping or even Amazing Grace, he gets that word out of your mind. He gets that word he keeps you from chewing on it I'll tell you what y'all to do get you a verse just read it it doesn't matter from
from Genesis to Revelation. You can get you can get in the uh, in, in the in the uh, uh, the genealogies and talk about begatting and begatting and begatting and get in that car and say, "What's begat? What what is begat?" And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost will start talking to you. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost He'll start pouring into you. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost He'll start telling you, "You need to do this. Need to do that. If you want to do this, you want to do that." You know what that is? That's meditating. Chew that cud. God will feed your soul. Preach, I don't believe it. Keep listening to your radio. I don't care. I'm just telling you, if you'll give God time, the timeless one will give you himself. He says, consume. How often should I read? How much blessing do you want? How long should I read? Depends on how much you want. There's not a right way and a wrong way to read the Bible. Right and wrong is this. Do it or don't do it. But then he says, keep it. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Watch this. That thou mayest observe to do all. You know the problem with so many of us? It's not that the preachers don't preach this or don't talk about this. It's we just don't do it. Can I tell you something? I can feed you stuff, but I can't make you chew. I could even make you chew if I wanted to. Just take you, but I can't make you swallow it. Listen to me. The end of the day, the majority of our problems is not that we don't know what to do. It's just we don't do it. We just don't do it. We just don't do it. Can I be honest with you? How many of you know you ought to read your Bible? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand here. How many of us actually do it on a consistent basis? Yeah. We, the problem is not that we don't know what to do. We just don't do it. I've got to give you number three. Let me, let me talk to you for just a second on the fact of good success. I've got three little things here at the end of the verse. Number one, you say, preacher, all right, listen, listen. Here's the objection so many of you will have to actually getting the Word of God into your life. You will say things like this, I've tried it and it didn't work. It didn't happen like I thought it would happen. It's probably because we're, we don't have the right idea. He says this, he says number one, he says the order it will come. Watch what he says in that verse. He says, for then thou shalt have, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou, thou shalt have good success. Do you know what the key word and that part of it is it is the word then can I tell you what we, we want we want the blessing and then we'll do what God tells us to do God you do this then I'll do that is not the way God works you know why because there's no faith in that God I'll do it and God said alright then this will happen can I tell you something we are faithless creatures we want to see it then we'll believe it. God said, oh, no, no, no. You'll believe it, and then you'll see it. Then, that's the order in which it comes. You say nothing's happening, then just keep doing it. Time means nothing to God, but God's timing means everything.